You know that thing when you're doing the dishes and all of a sudden water starts splashing on a spoon or an egg cup or something all over you? I really hate that. But yesterday when this happened, the macro photography nerd in me saw that, hey, this looks pretty interesting, this pattern of water. What if I would photograph this with a macro lens and a high speed flash? So this video is all about that, how to get cool looking macro photos using only a kitchen sink and some other simple tools. So you need a camera, some kind of macro uh, lens, doesn't need to be the 2x1 I use, and you need an external flash. I use my trusty Godox TT685 with a plastic lamp dome as a diffuser and this is just a regular lamp dome that you can get in a hardware store please don't ask me where to buy it because i bought it in my local hardware store you can probably find one of these pretty much anywhere and get one that kind of fits your flash uh, i was lucky enough to have it fit so well that i can just uh, put it over the flash and then besides that you just need a kitchen sink and an egg cup as in my case or perhaps a spoon something that can make the water splash in interesting patterns. And then just place the flash at an angle from where you're shooting. I did a lot of experimentation today and I suggest you do as well. I found that the most beautiful light you tend to get when you have your camera lens at 6 o'clock and the water stream in the middle and then the flash at maybe 2 or 3 o'clock so that it is behind the subject coming from a slight angle so that it doesn't shine directly into your lens. Uh, that way the light tends to look the best and uh, this uh, works well with anything that is transparent or translucent uh, such as water. The settings I used uh, were ISO 100 because I have plenty of light, I have a flash so no need to set it any higher than 100. And then I used a shutter speed of uh, around 160th of a second and sometimes 1 250th. Uh, in this case honestly the shutter speed does not matter uh, that much because the flash will stand for the majority of the light and the flash is very very fast like 1 10,000th of a second. So that is uh, what will determine how the exposure looks. So set the shutter speed to whatever you want. <laughs> and then I used an aperture of between f8 and f16. It depends a little bit on how close you are to the subject because the closer you are the more diffraction you can get if you're using f16. I was uh, mostly at maybe a half time magnification, something like that, because I didn't want to get too close to the water. Uh, that is something you obviously need to be very careful with when you're doing this so that you not by accident stick your lens into the water stream. For the flash I was using manual mode as I always do and I use a strength of 1 tooth or however you say that in English. <laughs> it's important not to use the strongest setting on the flash because then you get very long recycle times and the battery will drain fast and also the flash will be slower. You want the flash to be very fast and if you're using uh, less strength it will be faster. And if you don't have that fancy plastic dome diffuser that I have you can still get pretty much the same look if you just point the flash towards something white that is close to the water stream. Maybe you have white tiles or maybe the underside of your cupboard is white. Then just point the flash towards those places and you will get similar results as with a diffuser. I discovered that I got some pretty cool shots when I placed a black t-shirt behind the stream. So these are a few of those shots. And in general, just try lots of different angles and setups and take many photos. I took 500 photos in total, I just blasted away with my camera. And in this video you're seeing the ones that I found the most interesting. And it's actually quite a lot of fun to try to spot like things in the water shapes. Sometimes you see a human or a hand or something. And it's pretty cool to experiment with this. Also, the flash failed me a few times, so then I got accidental kind of longer exposures without a flash. And they also look pretty interesting, maybe a bit more abstract, but yeah, this is also something that you can experiment with. 
So guys, please subscribe if you like this video. I do new photography experiments and other fun stuff every week on this YouTube channel. And if you haven't still subscribed to my free photography inspiration newsletter, now is the time to do it. It goes out once a month and it contains my best photography inspiration tips and ideas. Thanks for watching. See you next week again. Bye bye.